Will the deferred maintenance on this 1990 Ferrari 348 on Bring a Trailer hurt its auction results? Or do people just not care and will pay anything for a six speed? Let's find out. Nerd! Big Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. Um, JP, a typical deem for Polnick uh, pick. 1990 Ferrari 348 TS. Um, this is a black-on-black -black example with particularly low miles, 31,000 miles uh, at 1,000 Oaks, California. The seller is WOB Wob, um, who brings a lot of cool cars to this beautiful studio, shoots them, and, uh, and does a great job of bringing the cars to market on BAT. They're one of BAT's top sellers. Um, although I don't know the people down there, but I love the cars that they bring. They're they're cut from the same cloth as you and I, JP, and the rest of the guys. Uh, super nice car. In preparation for the sale, John, um, a service in anticipation of uh, speed sensor, clutch, and a flywheel all replaced. Um, they did not mention anything about the belts, which I thought was a little weird. I didn't have time to go through the comments to find out if somebody directly asked them, which I would expect that they did. Um, but the fact that they didn't mention them Kind of leads me to believe that they probably need to be done. Mm. Um, but 348s are great cars. They updated the AC to the R134. It's got a limited slip differential, a dog, lead, a dog leg, five-speed manual, 17-inch wheels. Um, really neat car. JP, I know you're a black-on-black -black guy, but Mental, if you could jump ahead to a picture of the interior, I want to get JP's opinion as I send it over to him on a black-on-black -black car with red carpet. Yay or nay. Um, but look, super cool car. <clears throat> TS is kind of uh, sit in between the the top price paid for uh, coupes and the bottom price paid for uh, cabriolets. TSs are right in between, um, and that's kind of similar with the Porsche world, which is just a weird finicky thing about um, about the owners of these cars. But John, this looks like a really nice example that's pretty clean and low and with decently low miles. Um, what do you think about the red carpets and yay or nay? And then let's talk about where we think this one's going to hit. Yeah, I do like the red carpets. A little red goes a long way. And that's just a little bit of red that goes just the right amount of way. Um, yeah, I like this car. I love it. But the, it's, it's definitely a villain car. Yeah, right. It has a bad guy kind of look to it. Um, this car, though, unfortunately, it's just 348s are just they're too expensive. Um, this car we will get to the bids here in a little bit. But I mean, I really love these and I always wanted one and I liked them when they were kind of the cheap Ferrari um, or the inexpensive Ferrari. And now that's the Mondial, right? Um, yeah. And I'd way rather have one of these than a Mondial, but now the prices, they, they've just gone up too much. And th at the number that they get for these, uh, there's a bunch of other cars that I'd rather get. And this is not high on my list of cars that I want. It's, it's a car that it'd be like, okay, if I had a bunch of other things that I already want and then I had room and a little bit extra money, uh, would I go out and look for one of these? Maybe, but that's just not me. So what do you think, Wade? These cars are having their time in the sun. I yeah. mean, this is, this it's is young timer, right? Yeah. This is what people want. They want those eighties vibe cars, the mm -hmm. Porsches, the Lambos from the eighties that, and this is exactly what it is. And this is a, Pretty nice example of one. I, yeah. I give them a lot of credit for having a low mileage example. Everything's clean inside and out. I'm curious about those seats. I don't know if those quilted leather those red, the red the red horses are too much. Like the red carpet. Well, between fine, that but the red and, horses, the, and the and the crisscross much, leather pattern and all that, I don't I don't know yeah. if that was an option or if it, what the deal was. Even the red carpet's a little odd, but. It's a nice car, but like you said, I mean, there's a lot of other cars that are easier to maintain, easier to enjoy that I would rather have as well. I would kind of be nervous from a value standpoint and from a maintenance standpoint, investing a ton of money in a car like this. And I'm, I also am curious if we're going to see a sharper dip with these because they, they really went up quickly yeah. over the last year or two. And I would imagine at some point they come back down. I mean, they're not... Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars Ferraris at some point, right? Unless something crazy happens. Yeah. What so do you think, man? Oh. I, I was just I, gonna to, to Wade's point that the manual Ferraris have been have gone up, and they didn't make yeah. these cars with automatic. So I don't. I, I do believe that there'll be a dip. I do think they'll soften, but I don't think they're gonna fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, these cars didn't have the performance back in the day. And I think if you're looking for eighties, I think they, they, they got a bit of a boost from a halo effect from the Mondials and the, the, the generation previous to that, the three Oh eight and three thirties and in those, uh, which, you know, always get the, anyone who watched Magnum, uh, excited these, and it, they always, to me, they always felt like holdover cars until they introduced the new baby Ferraris. They're, they're gorgeous, but I just don't see them bringing super big money. I'm with you, Wade. I'm not entirely sure that that stitching is original. It's uh, definitely It's not. well yeah. done. And those those yeah, seats are pretty. definitely redone. Yeah, yeah they but, never had the... D- d- yeah. yeah. Uh, like, like, a, a, a set of red yeah. seat, red correct seats would actually look good because the, 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 nor- the seats that actually come in that car don't have that silly quilting. They don't have the red... Uh, horses, yeah, weird headrests um, too. Yeah, like it's just, they just don't quite look right. Um, th- I think those are factory seats that have been redone. If I had to guess, wouldn't you say so, Deep? I'm sorry, say that again, Jake. Are those those look like factory seats that have been redone? Uh, yeah, with I, the quilting I, and the stitching and stuff like that, because those tombstone I, I, uh, headrests are actually right. Yeah, I noticed them and and wondered myself, and then Wade brought it up, and I was like, "Yeah, I think he's right." I I, I didn't dare say it because I wasn't sure, but then Wade brought it up, and I I, I cannot recall seeing a three forty eight with um, diamond quilted stitching. So it does look like the centers may have been done, but the, the, the right the shape though correct. looks like it looks yeah. like they, that's what I'm saying. It looks like they've been re, like the real ones have been redone. I don't know. Someone can yeah. help us in the comments. I, yeah, well, and, they, and they, they somebody brought it up. The diamond stitching was never correct. Is that is that right? And then somebody had said no, never an option. So so Wade's instincts and the rest of us that are questioning it uh, seem to be on the on the same page. Um, J, uh, <laughs> Mental, can you bring up a picture of the car from the exterior where you can see both the front and the rear wheels? Yes, I can. You guys okay. keep talking. Yeah. So the the gist of it is that the, the there's a there's like a vein to the shape of the wheel that creates a, a, a thing where the the there's like a, a cut off on the wheel. Do you see how they look like throwing stars? Well the front and the rear wheels are going. Um, those are called diff- shurikens. Oh, are they? No. I'm saying is that the, true? the okay. throwing he, stars. He learned that from a South Park episode. Okay, yeah. Well, anyways, the, Actually, no, the, I didn't. the rears the rears are going in the right direction, but the fronts are, oh, are on the shit. wrong side of the car, so they're pointing the wrong direction. They're oh, going backwards. Oh my god, you're right. And somebody pointed that out in the in the things. I feel bad for the photographer that shot this car because there's no way he would have known. But now that it's up there, uh, that was brought up in the comments, and that just made me chuckle. So I thought I'd bring it up since we're nerds <laughs> and we 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 are skating to everybody. Yeah, that's, that's when you look. call our friend Lee at Patet Images and have him do a bunch of post production. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally fix it for you. Yeah. yeah, fix it in post. So all right, so JP, without further ado, our car closes tomorrow. It is currently sitting at forty three thousand seven hundred and sixty nine. Please don't ask me to decipher what that number is supposed to allude to. That's on 15 bids. This looks like a clean example. I think that car is going to bring twice as much when it closes tomorrow. So I'm going to give you $89,000 where I believe it will sell. JP, where are you at? Yeah, I think it's got a ways to go, but I think the weird seats are going to hold it back. It's just, you know, that happens with Ferraris. I think no mention of the belt thing, or did you say it was mentioned? I thought uh, it wasn't. There was some good service done in preparation for the sale, but the belts were not mentioned and they have to be treated as a mandatory. I don't see how you can sell a Ferrari like this without discussing where that is in the belt life, because that affects the value of the car. So Absolutely. this is yeah. silly to me. Silly, 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 and irresponsible. That being said, it's a nice car with low miles, and somebody might just say, I've got a mechanic who can do it under 10 grand. I don't care. I'll pay the money. So we'll yeah. see. I mean, the 348s are terribly, terribly fun to drive. You know, performance wise yeah, compared right. to other things uh, in, in that uh in that you know time frame, there's definitely better cars, but there's definitely better cars than 964s from the same time frame. Um, but that doesn't mean you know, I mean, who wants a 300 ZX turbo? Like nobody, right? <laughs> but a right. way better performing car than probably this thing. Um, but that said, uh, yeah, I think it's going to bring some money. Uh, but I don't. I'm going to go seventy nine three forty eight and send it to Wade. That's a that's a pretty big bid. Um, you know, these cars are fun, but this one has some questions. I think the seats are going to hold it back. Um, it's represented by a great seller, though. Great pictures. It has all the potential. But I think it's probably not going to be the one for most Ferrari people who want it. And for $71,000, it'll be a decent <laughs> buy, but that's about it. Mental, yeah, are but you with you... these? 
Hold on a second, but don't you? I mean, aren't, it's got low miles, and it, if it did, if it uh, if it did have the right seats, I mean, the right seats and a set of belts, and now this is like a ninety something thousand dollar car, isn't it? Um, maybe. What do you think, maybe. Mental? All right, what's your bit? I also am uh, just going to be sticking with it. I'm rolling through this. The current owner says it's really just a couple of. Uh, Electrical connectors and do the belts, but uh, dele- deliberately mentions not belts, insisting it's not that big of a deal. I think this car is going to go 75, and they should run away with all of that money and buy something else. Do, do, do you three guys forget what happened last week where all those cars brought way more money than we thought and still didn't sell? Like, you yeah. know, all of a sudden you guys are... Yeah, you guys are all, uh, um, you know, bullish. I don't really- counter to pressures. <laughs> bearish, I am consistently bearish. wrong. Bearish. Hey, guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Heuer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip-top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. Uh, this is a car that Michael D picked for me. He knows what I like. He knows what I like. He picked this Nero 1990 Ferrari 348 TS in all black. Look at this thing with the target top. Oh, I'm gushing over this car with the red pleated seats. That was something that I didn't actually like. Uh, This car comes out of Thousand Oaks, California uh, with 31,000 miles. This car... Huh, it's from a dealership and I, you know, is it one of the dealers that we talk about often? I think it is. Um, you know, they took really professional photos and yeah, car. this guy's studio is fan friggin tastic. Yeah, it really did present well. Um, I don't recall. Do we, did we remember if this thing had all the service or if it was still? Due? No, in fact, that there was, was the a problem, discussion right? in the it comments was, yeah. about the belts. Okay. Wade, take it away. Yeah, well, there are often questions with these cars, as you know, and without the proper documentation, that can affect the value 5, 10, 15 grand. So if you're not going to present the service history and people are going to ask, I think that's going to lead to a lot of question marks. And I'm curious, JP, from your perspective, is a question mark on a car like this okay? Do you feel like it's a discount or are you going to not touch it with a 10 foot pole? I mean, this is right up your alley. So where do you draw the line? Yeah, I mean, look, I have never had the balls to pull the trigger on a Ferrari. I have been so close so many times. Between this and the Mondial, I mean, I feel like flip a coin, right? Well, I mean, it's honestly the Mondial that we, or the Mondial or whatever that we talked about that we keep referencing from a few weeks ago, that red one was a much better deal yeah. um, it, because it did have all the service. It was, it was like, it had everything that you want when you're buying an old Ferrari. Um, when you get into an old Ferrari, uh, you are looking at really, really, really scary potential bills. Uh, I've told the story a million times. I almost bought a 355. Hmm. Um, it, it was from a, one of the dealerships that I represented years ago uh back in seattle it was like a barney purple one i have was never really? seen another one that might color. have been the rarest one on earth yeah. i know right i think about it now i'm just and it was like in the interior and exterior were this bluish barney purple why, why did ferrari allow that that must have been I, a really have bespoke have been, special i mean that could have been the sultan of brunei spec that you just walked right, away from i know right this or or or, uh, or your buddy uh sir sir mix a lot uh <laughs> yeah either way yeah it, it was in 2009 i think it was or whatever i mean like i didn't have the, like i think it was 50 grand um you know it was a six speed i think it had thirty thousand miles and it had all the service and everything mm. and but I was just like, I was so in love with this car. I had to get financing. I didn't have $50,000 cash laying around. So I was like, I got approved with my credit union. I was mm. going to buy this car. And they were giving me a sweetheart deal. Even at the time, that was a pretty good price yeah. at, at one for one. Um, and so I called a good friend of mine that owned a 355 at the time. And I just wanted some real, you know, because I was all over the all over the forums. Yeah, and people say, I mean, you can find both sides of the coin. It's the yes. greatest car, or it will immediately catch on fire as long as you, you know, as soon as you drive it. So 
what's the what's the real right. story? Some what people are saying, you? oh, it's totally overblown. You can drive no problem. And I was like, okay, so I, I'm like, all right, I'm going to actually talk to, I'm not going to listen to Yahoo's I don't know on the internet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to my friend Dave. I'm like, give me the skinny. You've owned one for five years. What's it like? He's like, it's awesome. The car is the greatest car of all time. You've driven it. You know what that it's like. He's like, but here's the skinny. You know, you got to do that service every five years or whatever. And uh, you got to, you know, it's like, I think at the time that was like a $5,000 service or whatever. Mm. He's like, and, and I was prepared for that. I was like, sure. okay, I can handle that. I can, I can handle that lifting. But he goes, <sighs> he's like, every time I take it to the Ferrari dealership, because that's the only place you can get it done, right? If you don't get it at the Ferrari place, uh, it devalues it. So yeah, if you people, go to some, People look yeah, closely at that yeah, service. It, it, that has changed, I think, now. But back yeah. then, that was a big thing, right? It had to be the Ferrari dealership. And uh, so he he said to me something that has stuck with me for years and will never leave. He's like, the, the smallest bill I've ever gotten for that $5,000 service was $15,000. Wow. He's like, that's the smallest bill I've ever gotten. I mean, that's, you know, 20% of the car every single time. That is literally a Honda. That is a Honda Civic, a three-year-old, perfectly reliable Honda Civic that you would send your kid to college in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so uh, he walked me off the ledge. I'm like, okay, I can't do that. I'm getting a But speaking of being walked off a ledge. Oh, look who it is. Michael Deeb is here in the house. What's up, buddy? Welcome to the show. Oh, man, crawling across the starting line. What's up? Good evening, fellas. How's it going? We've been here for an hour. We're already on scotch. We got gifts from Chris Carbine. I did. Did you get yours? Yeah. Are you drinking liquor? Mine's in the wash. Uh, I had a beer with dinner. I okay. Needed. All right. Well, he's like, I need a drink now. Uh, yeah. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome our right. uh, my partner, Michael Deeb, here in San Francisco. All right. Let's get back to We're this talking Ferrari. about the Ferrari. Yes. Um, yeah, so the so 348... You guys went on for half an hour. You did two cars. Well, <laughs> we, we were cars. trying to we were trying to buy Stall you some me. time. We were also, also that. as it turns out, uh, Wade was late. We was. we actually yeah, we know. were what? sending a search party out exactly for the first time never ever. Late. I thought I could end the year with never being late, and <laughs> I just end on a low note. Here I am. Wow, I know. Oh man. All right. Well. Well, Wade, let's finish. You get, to, you get to wax everybody's car this weekend. <laughs> all right, deal. <laughs> let's finish off this particular car. Uh, all right, so Deep, my partner, who's finally here, uh, yeah. he thought this car would go for eighty nine thousand dollars, despite the uh, not having the service records uh, of a recent of a recent uh, service. Um, I will. I parked it. A good solid ten grand underneath them, seventy nine thousand three forty eight. Got a little crafty. Uh, Wade, you were at seventy one grand, so you parked it under me. And uh, you know, I think Mental was playing it safe over there with seventy five thousand dollars. I just don't think they were that collectible. Uh, turns out this car did sell. With mm-hmm. 40 bids. That's a lot of people bidding on this thing, even though it had yep. those terrible, terrible pleated seats with the red stitching and yeah. the red horses. A really uh, little red goes a long way, and too much red goes way too far really fast. Uh, this car sold for just $60,000. Deeb, yeah. what happened mm-hmm. with that? Well, I, I mean, here's the thing. I think Wade and you both agreed that the things that weren't original on the car plus the missing you know, record of service would hold it back. And I really drank the Kool-Aid saying that at the moment, I believe all the gated manual Ferraris, especially a low mileage, you know, uh, TS, um, were bringing the money. And so I thought that those things wouldn't hold it back. And I was wrong by a long shot. I mean, th- that bid is two thirds of my bid. I mean, JP at 79,000 bucks, you were 20 grand over yeah. the selling price. Like if you I love how you me- always, I love how you always do worse, but then you, you make it a point to spell out just how badly I did, even just, though I did yeah. better Brings than you. It all the way Your bid down. was yeah. 20 grand over. Yeah, but yeah. yours was like 30 grand over. Yeah. How, how, yeah. how come <laughs> I'm getting pointed out? What you did I do? The, I was on time. By- you were off by the circumference of a lake in Snohomish. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lot. But um, here's the thing. If when we were putting our bids in, you would have told me it would have for sure it would have finished at 60 grand. I thought it would not have sold at that. So this to me is a guy that was desperate to get off the car. Um, despite this car having a reserve, it was an unbelievably low reserve, or they yanked it uh, because he was just like, this car's got to go away. Um, I think somebody got a deal. I, I do. I, I, I Look. Will this car be a collectible car down the road? No, not unless he fixes, or, or as um, Buddha would say, un-F those seats. Um, you'd have to fix it to make a collectible car. 
Uh, but but sixty grand for a low mileage three forty eight TS manual, I I still think that's a I still think that's a value in the marketplace. Look at that thirty one thousand miles. Yeah, I mean, go that's spend a, the six or seven grand on the on the service, and I don't think and fixing those seats would be that hard. No, no, you know, not at all, not at all, not at all. Couple so, of grand. So I think it was I think it was really well bought by a desperate seller. That's what I think was happening. What do you think, Wade? Yeah, I would agree with that. I, you know, something leads me to believe that this person maybe attempted to sell this car elsewhere and too many Ferrari purists were saying, what'd you do with the carpet? What'd you do with the seats? Why didn't it get serviced? This, that, and the other thing. And he just was like, I give up, dump it on, yeah. bring a trailer and whatever happens, happens. And I think that's some element to cars like this where people who want to buy them, they want some originality. They want some collector ability, especially now people want collector cars. <clears throat> but like you said, this is well bought. And I think for... I don't know, 15 grand, maybe, maybe 10 grand worth of work and cosmetics will put this car where it should be. And six or nine months from now, I think whoever bought it is probably going to get their money back and more. Yeah. Yeah. Good Mental, take. you have a uh, 65 grand burning a hole in your pocket. Is this something you pick up or do you wait for something a little more reliable? I, it's not a question of reliable. Uh, it, the, I took the really unpopular view on this one, and I talked about how this was the placeholder from the beloved 308 Magnum PI era until your your newer stuff that you're seeing, and it never just generated the same emotion that the two models that sandwich it did. Uh, I think someone did get a good car, and I would argue that even not even doing that ten grand, get the car and drive it. And then as these seats start to wear out, put in the factory stuff and then sell it. And you probably get away with a little bit of money or if nothing else, what, what a lot of Ferrari owners do is they buy these cars and then they just maintain this certain value and they sell them after a year or two, having enjoyed them and not eaten any depreciation. Yeah. I think one thing that I want to, you know, point out, not just on this car, but in the last car that we talked about the, uh, the 7911, um, you know, between P car market and, and, uh, bring a trailer, both these cars, um, both came in under our bids, right? Last week we kind of overbid on everything. Um, uh, and, uh, everything kind of, uh, failed to sell, right? Even though, <laughs> even though the numbers were, I'm sorry, we underbid, underbid on everything and, everything, was and high. everything. Yeah. The, the, the bids were actually higher than what we thought it would, uh, would happen, but nothing sold. So all this big money came in for a bunch of cars, but failed to sell. Whereas these cars had realistic, um, realistic reserves and actually sold. So someone at P car market, someone at BAT, the people who are setting the reserves are having come to Jesus conversations with their clients and convincing them to have reasonable reserves if they want to actually sell their cars or, or alternate universe. Stay with me here. They're watching the show. They could be bid moves fans. That is true. Good call. You can In learn a lot. In uh, our dreams. <laughs> what do you guys think of the results of this Ferrari 348? Was that a good buy? Uh, or was someone getting stuck with some really big repair bills and they're Why just going to pay both? now or pay later? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, reaching out again. The nerd herd is rocking it tonight. Um, everyone is here. We got Kevin. We got Jim. We got Tom, uh, Ross, we got Buddha is hanging out. He's in Buddha. You having fun? You having a good Christmas in, uh, Carolina, uh, David Vans hanging out. We got ba what, what? Bav speed racer. Come on, Bav. I like that speed racer hanging at Kevin Bodeman. Uh, I already said David, I think of course, Anthony's hanging out. Um, Jim's here. I mean, look, you guys, the nerd herd is rocking it, dude. It's a new year's. Uh, JP, and you, do you remember? Do you remember when we were teenagers and they came out with the internet? Uh, I don't. I don't. You don't. You I don't remember. Go ahead. It's going to say it right when we were teenagers and came out with the internet. Screw both of you. I'm yeah. kidding. I remember waiting yeah. for a single picture of porn to load on the dial-up oh, uh, for like one line. Well, what? Well, when they a came minute, out with another the internet, line, and, another minute, and it was, another line, and a minute. Log on like, to dogpile.com or <laughs> Google to, to find something. Yeah, um, you were going to Google as your first internet search. Come on, speed, you were looking at boobs. The first thing when, you searched for was tits. Give me a break. Yeah, but I'm you also you, you also did the on like on Lycos.com or what was the one with the the retriever? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, that went. <laughs> Twenty twenty five years ago when they came out with the internet. Um, I used Speed Racer was my password for everything. That was that was. Uh, um, I don't know. 
That's so clever. So clever. Yeah. Um, all right. You know, I think Alter uses Speed Racer for everything, too. I think you got my, Speed Racer. My, my, my eBay handle from the 90s is Speed R. Yeah, there you go. It seems like the Nerd Herd uses their real names. Other than the other than Speed yeah. Racer, yeah, now, just about everyone actually yeah. is not anonymous, right? N- nowadays, yeah. people are okay with their real names. Back then, you know, meeting people online, not not cool we're using your real names not cool yeah. you know yeah. but nowadays i mean you can you can literally know where people are right now where they're sitting just from a simple you know where the, they where they type it's, yeah. it's crazy their the median age of the herd is probably you know just to be died <laughs> from anybody they're like whatever it is I'm like i already served my time in guantanamo hey guys thanks for watching this clip of the bid nerds podcast play along with us live every sunday and wednesday night at 6 30 p.m on youtube and see if your bids stack up to the rest of the nerd herd in the chat live. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you on the next episode. Nerd! Get those nerds!